Hey everyone, we're Nick and Rachel. If you're new here and haven't been following our adventures so far, typically you'll find us vlogging our travels around the world. But today's video, and indeed this series of videos, is a little bit different. Because as we have been going through each of the countries we've been exploring, we've noticed there are certain things that are a bit different to what we're accustomed to in the UK and Canada. The reason that we have this YouTube channel is to share our own travel experiences in the hopes of inspiring others to travel more. With that, we want to share some tips and tricks that we've picked up along the way in each of the countries that we've visited, so that if you want to go to the same countries, you'll be armed with some helpful information and knowledge that will make planning the trip and navigating around once you're there a little bit easier. Today's video is going to be focusing on travel around Malaysia. If you've been watching our videos, you'll know that we explored Kuala Lumpur, Penang, Langkawi, and Malacca during our time in this awesome country. While a number of the tips and tricks that we're going to be providing you today will be specific to these places, we are also going to be providing you with ones that are relevant to the country as a whole. We hope that you find these useful. Starting off with tip number one, water is not potable in Malaysia. That being said, you can brush your teeth with the tap water, you just cannot drink it. So you're gonna have to buy bottled water, but like in many of the countries that this is the case, water is very cheap and affordable to purchase. Unlike some of the other countries that we had explored up to this point, there are a lot more Western style amenities in this country. So the likes of toilet paper, for example, are already provided. You don't have to worry about asking for them if you are gonna be staying in accommodation, catering for tourists during your time there. Both toilet paper and also the bum gun will be available at public toilets as well. So that should hopefully give you a bit of added peace of mind. The big cities in Malaysia are well set up for credit card payments. So the likes of hotels, and tourist attractions, major retailers, as well as convenience stores do accept credit card payments. However, you should still keep a little bit of cash on you because if you wanna to go to a more local restaurant or any number of the market stalls that they have, you will not be able to pay with credit card and you'll need cash for that. Malaysia in general is pretty well connected by public transport. For most of the cities that you are going to want to go in this country, then there will be rail links, bus links, and on occasions where you do need to go to an island, ferry links available as well. For all of those, then there is one singular website which is extremely useful to use, and that is EasyBook. EasyBook is kind of a one-stop shop slash comparison site for all of your travel options when going from point A to point B. Generally speaking, if you are considering going into city, then this should be your first port of call for anything in Malaysia. And the great thing is, all major credit cards are accepted through that online booking portal, so you don't have to worry about asking a local for help on getting these booked. When you are using EasyBook, then what you do get booked will be a fantastic experience and will get you from point A to point B with zero issues. However, there is a limitation and this is something you should also take with a bit of a pinch of salt. Any journey time that they are providing you is very, very loose and is dependent on a lot of things going exactly right. In our experience then with the majority of the bus and the ferry journeys that we ended up taking, they ended up being a lot longer, sometimes double the journey time that the website had stated. So if you are trying to sort yourself out with onward travel after getting a bus or a ferry via easy book, then definitely build that into your itinerary. We ended up actually getting on ferry and it took over twice the amount of time that it had stated on easy book and we ended up missing a bus as a result. So don't hang your hat on exactly what easy book is saying in terms of the duration of your journey. Give yourself plenty of time if you have additional connections. In terms of ride sharing, Uber is not available in Malaysia. Instead, they use the ride sharing app called Grab. So if you do need to take a taxi of some form, then we suggest you use the Grab app. 
And don't feel like you're just going to be downloading the Grab app for Malaysia only. Grab is used in the majority of Southeast Asia. So if you are planning on traveling to more than one country in Southeast Asia, you'll get a lot of use out of it. There are cheap warungs, which is basically a local restaurant available all over Malaysia. We highly recommend that you go to them because the food and the drinks that they have on the menu are some of the best traditional food that you'll be able to try. But if that's not up your street, then there are plenty of convenience stores such as 7-Eleven and Family Mart that sell things like onigiri, which if you haven't been to Japan, it's kind of like a triangle of rice that has some kind of fish or meat stuffing in the middle and it's wrapped in seaweed. They also sell sandwiches, baked goods, tons of canned coffee, tea, pop, juice, anything you can imagine. Now, supermarkets in our experience in Malaysia do not provide the kind of fresh foods that the convenience stores did. We found it to be more dry goods because I think that the way that locals generally shop there is more at the markets. So you would go and get your fresh fruits and vegetables or your fish and meat from a market. So in our experience, the supermarkets were not so useful to us when we were self-catering. We primarily went to warangs, convenience stores, and hawker markets. Speaking of hawker markets, now for anybody who doesn't quite understand this term, we were trying to figure it out ourselves. And I think probably the best way to describe it is like a mini food court. So you have a seating area in the middle of all of these little individual shops and stalls all of which are providing the potential for amazing food and drink. It's usually one of the cheaper options. You see a lot of locals going there and it provides an opportunity to try some amazing Malaysian food and also coffee or tea if you are down for that as well. Now on to some amazing Malaysian food that you really need to try. I think most people will probably heard of satay and you can get it at the hawker markets and I'm sure at Warren's as well. And it's basically barbecued chicken or beef or fish on a skewer. And then you're given the satay sauce, which is a peanut sauce. If you have an allergy, this won't be ideal for you, but if you don't have a peanut allergy, highly recommend it. It's amazing. In terms of breakfast, we recommend trying nasi lemak. That is very traditional. And then for lunch and dinner, there are a ton of other options. You could try nasi or me goreng. So one is a rice dish and one is a noodle dish. You could try rendang, which is kind of like a curry, but it's not a curry. Laksa, which I would describe as the Malaysian version of ramen, except for I think it's don't hate me a little bit better because of the coconut milk and the spices in it. It's really, really good. And finally, we also recommend roti chennai and char kway tao. You can't go wrong with any of these dishes and we highly recommend that if you have the time, try them all. Generally speaking, the hot drink of choice is either some form of tea, which is always available, but there is also cheap coffee options available too. The main ones that you tend to see would be the likes of Copy C and Copy O. One is made with evaporated milk, the other one is made with condensed milk, and we can never quite remember which one's which, but they are still really, really nice. A absolute speciality of Penang is their white coffee, which is utterly divine in our experience. If you're feeling more on the daring side, then there is something called Kopi Luwak, which has also been referred to as Cat Poo Coffee in the past. If you don't believe me, Google it. It is 100% a thing. But that one is definitely for the more adventurous and for those with slightly larger pockets because it does cost a pretty penny. Pretty much anything that they serve to you in a mug in Malaysia is going to be great. But do bear in mind, especially when it comes to coffee, it's going to come sweet. So be prepared for that. If you don't want it as sweet, then ask for it to be less sweet. And they are usually more than amenable to that. Kuala Lumpur is a very large city, but it definitely is well connected and has really good public transport links. 
They have an extensive metro system, which can pretty much get you all over the city and will take you to all of the tourist attractions that you could want to go to. You just need to buy a ticket at the station and then you can hop on a train. They also do have a bus network and we were told by one of our tour guides that there is a free bus. However, obviously this doesn't extend to all of the city nor all of the buses. It's a very specific bus line that is free. I do think it goes by some of the tourist attractions, but not all of them. So if you're curious, you could look into that. The other thing to note is Kuala Lumpur is quite walkable too. Yes, it is vast, but we do enjoy walking. So we didn't mind if something was an hour away, we had the time. So it is possible to walk to a lot of the tourist attractions if you're located fairly centrally. But for everything else, there's Grab. If you're planning on going to Penang, then it is worth mentioning that Penang as a region is split between islands and the mainland. The major town, Georgetown, is on the island. So if you are planning on heading over there, then you will need to get a bus that will take you to the bus terminal, which will be on the mainland. And then from there, you can walk straight to the ferry terminal. And after a 20 to 30 minute crossing, you will be straight there. The ferry is phenomenally cheap. I can't even remember it even costing any more than like two or three ringgit, which is peanuts. And because we went there on a special day, we actually got it for free. So you might even get lucky there. Once you are in Georgetown, then pretty much the entire place is extremely walkable. So every amenity and every tourist site that you're going to want to check out will be available to you by foot. Well, maybe not all tourist attractions. There are two that are located just outside of central Georgetown that we would recommend going to. One is Penang Hill and the other is a Buddhist temple and it's actually the largest one in Malaysia. The public transport links in Penang are not as good as those in Kuala Lumpur. The best way to get from the center of town to these other two tourist attractions is to actually take a grab. There are buses that run, but we found it to be a little bit inconvenient time-wise and the journey time was pretty long. And keep in mind, we were on a budget and for us to take a grab, you know that we are actually getting a decent price. Speaking of Penang Hill, when you do get there, then there are two main options to get up there. The first one is a funicular, which can be relatively pricey. The other option, which is completely free, is to go round the back of the funicular terminal and make your way up on foot. However, even as relatively fit people, we have to admit it took us by surprise in terms of how many stops we needed to make, how steep it ended up being, and therefore just how much of a workout it was. Going up, it took us about two hours, and I think coming back down, it took us around about the same kind of time, maybe shaving off an extra 15 minutes or so. So just bear that in mind. If you really do want to make your way up Penang Hill on foot, be prepared for a hike. Getting in and out of Langkawi can be a logistical nightmare in terms of coordinating the boat and bus schedules. So even though it's a little bit more expensive, it may be easier to just do an internal flight. One of the major things to do when you are on Langkawi is to go to the famed Sky Bridge. On a clear day, it means that you can see some of the most amazing landscape throughout the entire island, and it's just a sight incredibly worth seeing. However, we were very unfortunate with the weather. It absolutely heaved down. And what we didn't realize is that also meant that in some cases, the Sky Bridge wasn't available because it was too dangerous. So if you are finding that you're in Langkawi, you wanna go on the Sky Bridge, but there is adverse weather, then it is worth giving the ticketing office for the Sky Bridge a call to make sure that you can even access it. Otherwise, it's possible that you may be getting a grab to and from the Skybridge terminal for no reason at all. We highly recommend doing a mangrove tour from Langkawi if you have the budget that will stretch that far. 
not that they're crazy expensive, but it is definitely a more expensive day, but it makes for a really fun day. This gives you the opportunity to see the rainforest, jungles, and a ton of wildlife. We were able to see bats and eagles and monkeys. It was really, really a fun day out. And we got to go to a beautiful white sand beach. So if you have the time and the money, I highly recommend you do a mangrove tour from Langkawi. The final stop of our trip ended up being the beautiful city of Malacca. Its major claim to fame was being a trading port between the locals as well as the British, the Dutch and the Portuguese, all of whom have stamped a little bit of their identity within the city. So with that, it is a really, really good place to get your history on. It's also a very walkable place, so if you want to save yourself money and maybe skip the grab or any public transport, then it is very feasible to do so and still get to see everything you want. Malacca has its own hawker market, which is famous in its own right. It runs every weekend night, so Friday through to Sunday, and I think it's definitely worth checking out. It is a little bit more expensive than the night market in Penang, but it really does offer another opportunity to try some delicious traditional food at a still pretty affordable price. And that's our list for Malaysia. We hope that our tips and tricks have been helpful and that you can apply them to your future travels. This is obviously not a complete list of tips and tricks. So if you have any questions or if you have any further suggestions, please leave a comment below. Until next time, take care. And keep smiling.